<laughs> go, go ahead, first question. Mate, there's no try of the game award, unfortunately, but you would have won <laughs> it two weeks in a row, probably. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I, I think um, we talked about it at half time about the effort that we'd put in the first half. Something was going to come off for us, <laughs> and it did. Um, it was a good little try, and I think that first 20 minute period of the second half, I think, is probably our best uh, of the game. Um, we talked about before we started this game that um, defensively we had to be on and we had to make our one on ones, but unfortunately, we didn't, and they're just too good a team um, not to capitalize on those missed tackles. But I thought when we did um, defensively. We turned up for each other. You mentioned defensive efforts, Steve. I think it was uh, Satanic, same as three in the first half. Yeah. Like, real like, effort, effort plays. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's two ways you can look at it. You know, one, like you said, he puts the effort in and he, and he makes the tackle, or two, he just lets the person run by. And I, I don't think we let anyone run by today. Um, you know, even when they made a break, we chased, we chased hard. Um, just for that opportunity to stop the try, and I think there was a few more where we, um, you know, ran back and I think Mitsios pushed someone over the sideline, and um, there was a few times there they made a few breaks, and um, we turned up and got back there and made those tackles. So yeah, I can't, again, proud, um, but I can't fault their effort. And I thought we, um, I know the scoreline doesn't suggest it, but I thought uh, we improved from last week. And is that the goal? Going forward, obviously, as well, just to keep improving each week, first time out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think, I mean, we had a few players pull out um, through injury and uh, just the flu that's going around at the moment. Um, and then Robert uh, was really disappointed he couldn't play because he's half Samoan. Um, but I allowed him to go out and um, enjoy the, the atmosphere of um, the Haka and uh, our national anthem. So. But yeah, he was really disappointed, but you know, player welfare is the most, most important thing um, for players. And so we had to pull him out this morning. He had a fever last night, so that was disappointing for him. But uh, yeah, I think our goal is to improve every week and just enjoy, obviously, the, the World Cup um, and all it has to offer. Again, the players love going over towards the crowd and cheering um, you know, the, the crowd that are coming with the Greek flags. Um, you know, it does give the players a real buzz. and and the passion behind um, the Greek League League team. Steve, you mentioned that first, like people will look at the result tonight and some others early in the tournament and say, you know, maybe this shouldn't be a platform where you put in, where games like this are put on, but for you guys, I'm guessing that, you know, you can only build from playing these top-end teams like Samara, like England next week. Oh, of course, I mean, Steve will tell you, mate, there's games in the NRL that end up 72-4, 66-4. Um, when one team's on, they're on. Uh, but I, again, I, I don't think today's score is a true reflection of the effort we put in. But we missed a few tackles, and I mean, some teams can score try after try after try. Uh, but I thought there was periods in that game where we got into the arm wrestle, and you know, we, we held our own for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. So, yeah. as, as a player, like, what do you learn from that 80 minutes? Do you actually learn about footy playing against? Team like that? Yeah, 100%. Like, we're a mix of first graders, reserve graders, and some pub footballers, so it's good for us just to sort of see the level and, you know, um, just the intensity. Like, you know, they don't come in and out of games, like, they're on pretty much from 0 to 80 minutes. And for us, like, that's probably the difference. Like, we probably came in and out of the game in patches, um, whereas, you know, Samoa just, you know, they're relentless and just didn't stop. Mm. And I guess what George is saying, like, people waking up in Australia now and they, they read the score and they read the crowd. And that's all they see, and they don't realise that there's an aspect of a whole level, of a layer of a World Cup that, that, that isn't reflected by the crowd and the score. How would you kind of explain it to people like, who just look at the crowd and the score, you know, like about what it, why it's different to just another game of footy, you know? Yeah, I think there's just a lot more lessons in these games than there are for us playing like some of the nations closer to us. Like, we need those games, we need these games as well. So not that we get complacent, but we just have to like, you know, talking it, talking about it, and seeing it on TV is one thing, but going out, experiencing it is another, and like we need that experience to kind of keep building. And Steve, a lot of the benefits are off the field as well, aren't they? And the the great thing about the World Cups that you can't 
appreciate unless you're involved in it. You know, what, what are some of those kind of things for people who wouldn't get it? You know. Well, I, I mean, you know, you have to, I'm not a, I'm not high up on the social media and all that sort of stuff, but the players have been telling me and certain staff members that um, understand the social media side of things and. They say the amount of hits, I don't know what that means either, the amount of hits you get and all that sort of stuff, but they're saying everyone's watching us, everyone's talking about us, everyone's talking about the first try. Um, we didn't realise Greece played rugby league, you know, and all of a sudden, the, you know, we, we hit, I think we hit three major TV channels in Sydney uh, last week, um, you know, 7, 9 and 10. And I mean, how do you pay for that publicity to try to promote that game in Greece? And then even, I mean, even there was the um, the shot of the oh, the bar in Athens yeah. where you know we scored the first try. I mean, that's that sort of stuff you can't buy. It's priceless. And um, what Steve's saying is true that we're trying to promote the game. We're trying to get the game as part of the Greek culture um, and what's happening here in the World Cup and, and the way we're playing and the passion we're showing, and the effort we're putting in, regardless of the scores can only reflect on what's going to happen in Greece in the next three or four years. Yeah. Steve, um, three domestic players tonight, um, up against table professional NRL players, basically Samoa's an NRL team. A lot of them played the grand final for Penrith. Um, what does it mean to those domestic guys to, to, to play in those matches? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it means so much to them. I mean, it could be the whole lot of their life playing in the World Cup, uh, coming from Greece and you know, playing rugby league is a sport that you play once every month um, because of you know the restrictions they had before that, and hopefully they're playing weekly after they go back in their um, domestic competition. But it means everything to them. I mean, I know Bosmos come up to me before the game, and he said to me, and he's broken English. You know, I, I, I'm I'm a bit nervous, and I said, well, that's a good thing. I said it just means that you want to perform and you want to do your best for your country. Mm. Um, yeah, and then he went on and played that last 20 minutes and um, yeah, I, I don't think, well other than maybe other things in life like marriage or babies coming, I don't think he's going to have a you know, better moment in his life playing in the World Cup and, yeah. and playing, you know, for his country. Thank you.